experiment, you can ask people throughout the chain, okay, well, what were you told? And, or what did you say? And you can very quickly see how a story or information gets completely skewed. In mind that my whole seven year nightmare, and this whole thing started with a false accusation. So the initial statement or story was fabricated to begin with. And if you tell the truth in the telephone game and it gets skewed, can you imagine how much worse it is when it's a lie that starts this chain? Anyway. So here's a good example, one example of many in my case, where the telephone game, you can you see it play out. And this is this is a problem with people relaying information to each other. Hello, today is August 31st, 2020, and the time is 10.45 a.m. In the past few videos, and I've mentioned this in videos over the years, something called the telephone game. And this is going to tie into uh, something else towards the end of this video. Now the telephone game, for anyone who doesn't know what that is, it's basically someone on the telephone tells someone else a story and then that person who received that story calls someone else on the telephone and eventually the story becomes completely distorted. Now there's experiments that have been done and I've been part of these experiments in post-secondary where you have a room full of people and one person uh, begins by making a statement to the person beside them. And actually I was in one of the experiments, I was that person, I made a statement. That person beside me then relates that statement to the person beside them. And as the story moves around the room, it uh, eventually gets to the end person directly in front of me. and. It's interesting how most of the times the original statement is not even remotely close to the original statement. And this is what the telephone game means. And you can try this actually uh, for yourself. There's, you know, people do it at parties sometimes. Anyway, the reason why I'm highlighting this is because someone had pointed out to me in my silent video two screenshots. And the one screenshot states, and this is from the original police report, I guess that was taken May 4th or May 5th, 2013, saying that I left the position. Now what's interesting when you go through the disclosure package, pick one, now there's four different versions of it, I was terminated from my position. So we go from my leaving to being terminated, both based on the false narrative of the female. And you pick one false narrative because apparently it's, it, it changed. And I highlight that in that silent video. So this is the problem when people tell a story and it gets passed around and it becomes completely skewed. And that is simply in my case alone. And when you try to highlight to someone, say within that chain, that no, the, the version that you heard is not accurate. Um, maybe at best there might be a fragment of truth, but usually by then it's the, the, the whole narrative is completely skewed. And how people, when you try to explain something to them, they call it cognitive dissidence or their feelings um, are too ingrained into the conclusion that they formed pick something and when you try to explain to people they 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 may even look at it from their perception well we're disagreeing on this not realizing that no it's not a disagreement it's trying to explain some facts and this is why it's also important for people not to share their opinions, their theories, their beliefs, their desires, and whatever else. These are all called personal fictions. And the problem with that is 
when you start putting that into the mix, that really skews everything. So you have someone telling a story, they're using their perception, their feelings are all mixed in, and they're trying to recall what was said before. And then they, some exaggeration comes into play, and before you know it, lies become the truth, the accepted truth. And then the final comment to this, and I'm just trying to skim over this topic or these topics is this is why people actually believe falsehoods because of this chain of events now I'm gonna make one final point that we also have issues with ability people who lack critical thinking skills and extensive knowledge base and not being able to make informed conclusions based on uh, not separating emotions and so forth. So we have all this in the mix as well. Anyway, that's all I want you just to highlight uh, regards to when you share information and well, what not to share with regards to personal fictions. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Uh, approach people, say with facts, and try to explain to them. A lot of people default to in their minds saying okay well we're disagreeing there's nothing there's no disagreement like how do you even come up with that and things get further skewed over the passage of time people's memories become skewed they try to recall and, and even within someone's own head they may have re recalled what was the story that was told to them or the information and, and even over time which is another thing that has, that's why you, you need to be, for example, tried within a reasonable time. Because the courts along the way realize that the longer something drags out, the more ingrained someone's interpretation, their feelings or whatever, is affecting or could affect the conclusion. As well as just simply forgetting, forgetting key facts. So, I mean, it doesn't matter what social title you have or if you're educated or not. I mean, your people's memories will fail them. Now there's exceptions to that where if you have evidence of something or you've made notes of something that you can go back to to remind yourself that assists to, oh yes, and, and you know, with all the evidence that I've gathered, whether it be through audio recordings or notes or just um, various materials over, with regards to my case over the years, I see how, you know, I, I'm even reminded of details and everything else. And it's like, yes, 